Happy you could come along. We are joined, as always, by Greg Engert, beer director for the Neighborhood Restaurant Group, a James Beard Award nominee. The group includes where we are, a new location, Blue Jacket, and we are going to talk about this new facility in the Neighborhood Restaurant Group in just a moment. But first things first, and you could still argue most importantly, the beer of the week. Greg, it is always good to see, good to see you. you. too. What is on tap this week? So this week, uh, we were lucky enough to get our hands on a very limited release from Bell's uh, Brewery out of Kalamazoo, Comstock, Michigan. It's called The Oracle, and it is an Imperial or double IPA. And uh, normally when you think of Bell's and Imperial IPAs, we think of uh, one thing alone, and that's Hop Slam. Um, Sometimes. And, uh, uh, but, you know, I think possibly to satiate those who are looking for a hop slam year round and to continue to evolve their brewing, um, they've brewed this new Imperial IPA. And this is actually the fourth release of it. It, it first came out in 2010. So uh, 2013 is the fourth release. An amazing, uh, just like hop slam, 10% Imperial IPA, but you'll see it's slightly different. This one's supposed to be a little bit more of a intense kind of hop bitter kick in the finish. Okay. Very West Coast style uh, IPA, so uh, should try it out. Ah, uh, yes, familiar, familiar nose. You see it much drier than, oh yeah, than Hop Slam. Hop Slam. Everybody knows the Hop Slam is brewed with honey, and that doesn't necessarily sweeten it out too much. There's a little bit of residual sweetness, but it's just on the whole a kind of a. a a little bit more of a maltier Imperial IPA than this is. Um, this is much more intensely and aggressively um, bitter, but cleanly bitter in the finish. Right. Um, very fruit forward as well. I know when they first started brewing it, they were using uh, Amarillo hops, which are a Pacific Northwest hop that's fantastically fruit forward, very like orangey. Um, and I think they were using some New Zealand grown varietals at that time as well, uh, Pacific Jade being one of them, which is known for being very earthy and kind of grassy and floral. And altogether, what you get here is a really cool kind of grapefruit uh, aromatic. I'm happy to say I, there's so many beers out there I've never heard of, uh, which may, what's, is what makes this so much fun. Right. And this is one of them. I, I, I didn't even know that existed. And, and there's not, uh, the alcohol taste is not as no, no, up there no. as Hop Slam. No, it's not yeah. as big and bold and boozy. Hop Slam is almost like uh, an American strong ale or almost going towards American barley wine just with its intense uh, sweetness that it has to balance the bitterness. This is undeniably a West Coast Imperial IPA. What was the inspiration behind this for them? And, and it, it, it's, it is tied to Hop Slam in, yeah. in its genesis? Uh, yeah, well, not really. I think or, it's hard to say. I think that, you know, Hop Slam, they kind of created a monster with that beer in that it comes out once a year. We all know exactly when it's coming out. We all seek it out. And they actually make a good amount of Hop Slam. I mean, right. we try to get as much as we can. But they're, you know, everybody kind of gets a good amount at once. And um, you know, they could brew Hop Slam year round if they wanted to. Um, but keeps it special, keeps it very rare, keeps it scarce. Um, so I think this is just an evolution of Bell's continuing to brew more and more interesting stuff. I mean, they obviously are masters of hoppy beers. You think about uh, Two Hearted Ale. It's one of the best American IPAs uh, out there that you can get year round. Uh, Hop Slam is obviously fantastic, so why not uh, throw another one into the fold. And, you know, speaking of which, um, just, uh, just found out recently that Victory Brewing Company is actually going to stop making Hop Wallop, which is their Imperial IPA, um, for a couple of years at least. And this is because, in part, you know, they want to they play around with new hop possibilities. You cool. know, lots have happened over the, you know, the past 10 years or so. And so there's so many varietals out there. We think of like Pacific Jade being utilized here. There's so many different ways you can utilize them. And some breweries uh, have many, many different kinds of IPAs and pills and Imperial IPAs. So I think Rebels are just kind of like filling it out. And there's, you know, they know there's definitely an audience for this. Um, but very rare, uh, no draft came around this time uh, and, and only bottles, but super fresh too. This was bottled um, on the 9th of August, I think. Oh, wow. So it's very, very, and they have, a, they have a bottling date on there too. So it's really cool. Well, that's cool what, what they're doing and what, and what Victory's doing because, you know, you, you, I'm sure there's people out there who drink nothing but hop wallop and this will force them to, to try, try something, something yeah, else. Yeah, exactly. Does it make it, because it's, it's drier, is it easier to pair with food? Um, no, I think actually <laughs> the sweetness of hops them is pretty fruit friendly. But 
This can work with another thing. You always talk about big, rich cheeses. Um, rich desserts can work as well because you kind of bring that, that fruit quality into maybe like a chocolate cake or cheesecake, something like that. Okay. But then also, you know, all manner of charcuterie, ham, mm, awesome. Yeah. Kind of bring glazes it in some ways with that fruity um, quality. Uh, and also grilled pork chops really work nicely. You get that, that really kind of uh, that charred um, bitterness is excellent to balance against the, the hot bitterness as well. We're going to be here at uh, Blue Jacket for this episode and at least the next two episodes. So we're going to just talk for a couple minutes about Blue Jacket uh, here and then in the next couple episodes. Tell us a bit about, first of all, how the early germ of an idea of Blue Jacket started for the so, NRG. Yeah, so when I joined the Neighborhood Restaurant Group in 2006, one of the, my, my, my first duties was to kind of come up with new um, concepts with Michael Babin, who's the founder and owner of NRG. We started thinking about new beer concepts. And we had two major ones at the time. Uh, and uh, they would become Bertram Marley and Churchkey and soon will become Blue Jack. Those were, going back to 2006, we always decide where we, where we do our projects based on the spaces. So we walked into the Bertram Marley Churchkey space. It was like, this has to be Bertram Marley Churchkey. And then finally we found this space uh, just after, we saw it for the first time just after we opened Birch and Marley and Church Key in October 2009, about four years ago. And um, we walked into this space and just said, this could be it. Because we wanted to, it's a, Blue Jacket's a production brewery that's sitting up on mezzanines here above the bar and restaurant, which will be right over there. So we wanted a place that could do that. Originally we were thinking if we're going to do a production facility, we'd have to do it like in the outskirts of D.C. or even in the suburbs just for space. But this is beautiful, this is Navy Yard, uh, the old Boilermaker factory for the Navy. This building was built in 1918. Wow. Um, it was uh, a shell of a building when we saw it about four years ago. Nothing but glass, exterior, and steel. And we came in and built all the mezzanines, you know, put down the floors, the tanks behind us, and the, the space is filling out nicely. So um, we're excited to get started. All right, we'll talk next time more about uh uh, we're saying, I mean, coming soon. You're right. going to be opening Very soon. soon. Very uh, soon. And we'll talk next time about what sort of beers are being made here. And also, as many people know, it's just a beer cap flick away from Nat Stadium, which is very cool, too. So, Greg, thank you as always. Thank you. Everyone, please always do drink responsibly and be sure to bring your thirst next time for another beer of the week. <laughs>